Hello, critics, non-critics, and friends. Welcome to the Film Optics Podcast, brought to you by the Drive-In Podcast Network, where we discuss film, TV, and all things Hollywood-related here on the show. I'm your host, Christian, and I'm joined by my trusty co-hosts, Zevin. And here today, <laughs> today, here, we are here to, wow, I can't speak today. Why am I talking like a speaking spell? Anyway, the harder we, they speak. How do they speak? I don't know. But we are here today to give our thoughts on the latest movie to hit Netflix before Red Notice comes out, uh, The Harder They Fall. And before we begin today's show, you can listen to our podcast on platforms around the internet. If you're a new or seasoned listener to the show, we'd love to hear from you guys. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. We're, we're more active now more than ever, which is actually very true. <laughs> Very, very true. We're more active now, more than ever, at least on the Twitter side. So definitely go follow us over on um, Film Optics. That is Optics with an X over on Twitter. My gosh, I'm so sorry. St I'm still getting over this cold a little bit, so I do apologize. I, I got my nice little uh, Irish black tea here next to me. So it's really, really nice. Uh, Devin. Irish or yeah, you got some nice, some honey in there as well. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, repair my throat because I got to do another one of these uh, later on tonight. So I think I'm just going to be mute until then and then power through. But Devin, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I have not fallen yet. Getting through the week. It is hump day. We are halfway there. Yes, you're halfway there. Hump day. It's crazy here in Nashville, man, because apparently the Country Music Awards are starting tonight, and it took me 45 minutes to get home. Almost fit, almost an hour, pretty much. I'm, I'm going to say like 55, because I actually just walked in the door like maybe 10 minutes ago. It's been, there a bunch of horses in the, in the road or something? Oh, yeah, man. We got cowboys. <laughs> we got cowboys. We got cowgirls. We got, we got buggies. We got, we got tumbleweed. You know, everyone's just bringing out the uh, the old family moonshine. They're just having a good old time down here in Nashville. You know, it's, it's good stuff. But, yeah, it, it's actually been a nightmare trying to get home. Usually only takes me around 20 to 25 minutes. But for some time, for some reason today, it was just blah. I, I absolutely hated it. But it's been a good week so far. Um, A long week, but a good one. So, I don't know. I mean, we, we're finally here talking about The Heart of They Fall, one of the best films to hit netflix uh this year personally and a western no doubt because we we don't get a lot of westerns nowadays which is interesting but Devin, i have one question for you are you excited for spider-man finally coming to marvel's avengers finally how long has it been since they made this you know, announcement you know, the, you know the funny thing is i actually have ps4 avengers oh Devin's over there sneaking one of those it's one of those uh, GameStop buy two get one free used games, and I got that as the free one because there was nothing else I wanted. Was it during a Black Friday sale like this year? No, it was just one of those random days where they have buy two get one free used games. Oh, okay, I okay. Like, I mean, I guess I'll get it. I wasn't even thinking about Spider Man at the time, but in hindsight, <laughs> it kind of worked out because I can at least play a Spider Man. Yeah, like honestly, and I know we're talking about video games right now, but that game has gone through the ringer, and then. Square Enix like throwing Crystal Dynamics under the bus, bus. Oh, you know, they weren't the right developer. I'm like, my God, Square Enix, you knew you should not have been trying to make this cash grab microtransaction multiplayer game for a superhero. There's just no way. But anyway, this is a movie and film TV podcast, but I had to get that out there because we finally get something. We, we can relate it to the MCU because uh, Jonathan Majors is amazing in this. Yeah. He is archaic. You know, you know, what's really crazy. I found that Zazie Beats is only is only one year older than me. One year. Interesting. Very interesting. And she does a fantastic job in this film. So we will be back with our The Harder They Fall review right after this short break. Proof is a book. Man, old devil. This is going to be Buck's last day amongst the living. What exactly he do to you? Call it a professional rivalry. I know who you are. That love, the outlaw, hunts down those who trespass against him. But 
no mercy. Where is he? Where is who? The boss. My boss. Clearly, you don't know me. All right, Devin, and we are back with our The Harder They Fall review, and this movie is fantastic. We have an amazing director, uh, Jemai Samuel, um, who also uh, was a writer on this film, as well as Boaz Yakin, and it stars, God, who doesn't this movie star? Idris Elba, Jonathan Major, Zazie Beetz, RJ um, Seiler, um, Regina King, uh, Roy Del, uh, uh, Delroy Lindo, that <laughs> did I did I put your name? <laughs> is it Delroy? Yeah. It is okay. I almost said Roy Del Lindo. I'm like, that is not correct. Yes, Delroy Lindo is also in this. And many, many others. Lakeith. And, and yes, and Lakeith Stanfield. Oh my gosh, Devin. I'm so sorry. Like I said, it's been a crazy, crazy day. And whew, man. How, how could you forget one of the worst names in the biz? <laughs> right now, yeah, he is he is definitely one of the worst names. I'm, I mean, just in general, it's just a not a great name, Lucky. It's really not. I mean, he wh- whether or not we're talking about his ideals w- with certain things, but yeah, it's not a very good. I, I like the name Zazie though. It's like Zazie. Yeah, it's, it's like ZZ Top, but Zazie. She, she has mesmerized me since I saw her in Atlanta, and I've been a fan ever since. Okay, I think my first um, introduction to her was in Deadpool two. I've actually never watched Atlanta, but I hear it's a really good show. So good. Here, people were trying to actually like compare Atlanta to Dave. I sent you that tweet a while ago, didn't I? I mean, it's just an easy comparison to make because they're both shows on FX oh, starring a, a person who has a rap career. Yeah, I mean, you've it's seen... It's easy to kind of bl- bl- put those two together. I mean, you've seen both. I mean, I, I wouldn't yeah. ask you to choose. But, but they are they are completely different tonally. Okay, okay. That's that's pretty much... Atlanta awesome. is much more of a drama, and Dave is more... Comedy? A strictly comedy. Okay. Some some dramatic moments. Okay. I, I do want to check out both shows. Like, they are in my backlog. It's just... I've been very, very busy with <laughs> this Harry Potter movie series review. I mean, I'm having a blast with it, but like at the same time, I cannot wait for it just to be over. But so we can get into our other movie series review, review, but that's going to be significantly shorter. But we'll, I'll talk about that more towards the end of the show. But yeah, uh, the plot is as follows for The Harder They Fall. When an outlaw discovers his enemy is being released from prison, he reunites with his gang to seek, seek revenge in Leia's country western. Well, it just says Western, but I wanted to add that part. So we're, we're back. In Texas. <laughs> Texas. Tejas. <laughs> All my exes live in Texas. Number one. First and uh, first. Almost. Like I say this is number one rule. But Devin, give me your thoughts on this film. Give me your initial thoughts for everyone out there. Of course, we'll be doing our non-spoiler section first. And then... When you hear that little bad boy, it means we'll be getting more into spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it on Netflix because it's available for everyone at any given time. Watch it at work. Watch it on your break. Watch it while you're getting your tires rotated at um, at, at your local um, shop. So, yeah, Devin, hit me yeah. with those initial reactions. So we get we get Westerners pretty often in Hollywood, I'd say. Um, it's, it feels like every few years there's a new type of Western that comes out. I think the last one was probably like that, that one that Chris Pratt was in. I forgot what it was called. It was decent. Uh, Magnificent Seven. Yeah. It feels like that was the last one that kind of came out. Yeah. Well, but there was one, another one as well, but I'll let you finish first. What was it? Um, it was, uh, Concrete Cowboy with Aegis Elba. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That was very recently. I never mm. watched that one. Though. I didn't either. Not yet. But um, anyways, this one, um, I really think this one was a really fresh take on the whole genre as a whole, just from from the style that it was in to just these actors' portrayals of these actual real-life characters, which is very interesting. Every character was based on a real person. The story wasn't necessarily based on true events, but every character was real, a real historic person at one point. I think that's really interesting. Just to see that the, take, the takes that they had on these type of people... Um, back in the uh, the old Western times. I just thought it was really cool. Like, it was all so cool and stylized. Like, even the, the title sequence in the beginning, where it's like, the harder they fall, scrawls out word by word as he's 
as gunshots are getting put into this guy. That was just so cool. A great way to start it off. And I love the characters. The actors are amazing. It was just a good old Western time. Now that is a good old Western answer. Yeah. I would see, I was gonna add in some uh some nice little like Western sound effects, but unfortunately I did not have time to do so uh due to work and whatnot and just due to uh you know everyday life. But yeah, I, I pretty much echo just like play old town road. <laughs> honestly that's, that's all we need i'm surprised that wasn't in this movie i'm not gonna lie man uh, i kind of wish it was but I, I was, it was a really cool soundtrack too. but no the soundtrack was fantastic um and like you know like you were saying um and um i i really did enjoy this film i actually uh wrote a uh a written review over on the nsessionfilm.com website that um that will be in the show notes down below if you guys want to check that out but I mean, it's it's a very it's I mean it's a very special film because number one you don't really see a lot of westerns nowadays, let alone good westerns. It is unfortunately a part of that dying genre, um, much like slashers. Unless you're watching Fear Street, am I right? <laughs> slashers are back, baby. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. I some are. I I feel like slashers can work again with new stories instead of like Halloween kills. I mean, I'm excited for scream five Halloween kills was definitely a new story. Well, yeah. Cause it, it was a reboot, but I, I guess I'm, I I'm thinking more of, well, actually no, cause fear street was adapted from RL Stein's. So I guess, you know, there's yeah, no, there's, I mean, we've got Halloween fear street scream flasher slashers way in. We are back. Devin's all excited. I am very excited. <laughs> but I've, I'm just as excited for Westerns to come back because one of my favorite movies of all time, actually, it's Django Unchained. Even though that does happen more in the South, there were cowboys back then. But I really like how this movie, it, like, like you said, you know, this is a fabled story, but, you know, the the characters that um that they're playing or the people um the, the, these were real people in in western times and let alone they were black you know cowboys and cowgirls and there were you know african american cowboys and cowgirls back then you just don't really hear you don't hear about them all too much but it's very you know like from everything from like um i mean news of the world is kind of like another one and i kind of mentioned that like in my uh, review at incessionfilm.com um where it's kind of like more so western you know you have like you know the white man and then the um uh, you know, the indigenous um uh, native americans and whatnot but this was just like like an all black film and it was a lot of fun and they shot on location which was really really awesome that's what i really really liked about it as well and um of course you know it, it really is just like a special film just because i mean the action was there you know you had romance you and it was very very funny like it's very very engaging from start to finish there's a lot of um mystery between jonathan major's character what happens with his parents at the beginning of the movie and moving on that, into that smile that that damn smile of jonathan majors oh my god <laughs> he's so good it's it's so, he says so much it's just a facial expression yeah, it's and a lot of actors can really, you know, essentially act with their face and it it gives you even a more sense of just understanding it's like, oh, you know, like I know exactly what he's thinking right now and he doesn't even have to say anything. And and that that's what I really like about it just be, it's so I, I'm not even just shooting on location like I mentioned before in my super raspy voice like again, again, I'm sorry guys, it's really it sucks. <laughs> um, this this time of year really does suck, but it it really is a uh, it's it, it's a marvel for sure. I mean, I think they shot in um, places like New Mexico, uh, Santa Fe. Um, the scenery was just fan freaking tastic, and the, the story itself is very engaging. You know, you have it's it's kind of like a, a, a revenge film. You have these two gangs, these two. Um, western gangs are just it's it's and i know that's how the opening credits are like introducing you to the gangs mm -hmm. like giving you that backstory yeah it re in, in also in the opening credits like we said you know it it literally says that you know the you know the story is fake but the people are real and it really just gives you that that understanding and it's just just really great uh representation of you know not only just like black actors and actresses but just 
um, you know, uh, African American cowboys and cowgirls back in the day. I mean, even the um, the uh, my gosh, what am I trying to say right now? The uh, the soundtrack itself. I mean, there were so many people on this. It's it's yet yet uh, CeeLo Green, Kit Cuddy, Coffee, and it's it literally feels like you know this was a movie made by black people for black people because you don't really get a lot of that. I mean, honestly, I think the last time we really saw something like this was probably black Panther or no. I mean, I would say Spike Lee's uh, the five bloods for sure. Probably yeah, everything Sp- Spike Lee makes. Yeah. Pr- pr- anyway, yeah. Anything Spike Lee makes, man. How good was black Klansman? <laughs> oh my God. I got to watch Amazing. that again. It's so good. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. But yeah, I mean, those are, I mean, I know I kind of rambled on here for that, but I really did enjoy the Hotter Day Fall just because I mean, the, the story itself and, you know, the twists and turns, because I really didn't know how the story was going to end. Um, I believe the runtime is not terribly long, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, it, was, it was it was two two hours, 19 minutes. Was it two long. hours, 19? Okay. Well, I, I, I mean, I feel nowadays when it comes to a lot of these films, like anyone... Like people like freeze up if it's like anything over two hours, but I will say you can't make an amazing movie within like the ninety minute, like hour and a half mark. It, it is intimidating when you see that that big number staring at you when you're looking for a movie to watch. Yeah, a I mean, especially bit. with like Eternals, because I mean, usually Marvel movies aren't that long, but it was kind of needed for that. But I mean, on both sides, for critics and the audience score. For the harder they fall, um, you know, people have been enjoying it overall. Uh, to- tomato score for critics, um, it's sitting at 86%, and audience score is sitting at a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. So everyone seems to be doing, like, just enjoying the heck out of this movie. It is playing in select theaters, depending on where you live. I believe, like, I mean, if you live in LA and New York, nine times out of 10, it's going to be Gotta playing. Gotta get that, that Oscar eligibility. Yeah, that too. I mean, Netflix has really been hitting hard with all this. I mean, who who would have thought, like, my gosh, I don't know, even five, six, seven, like, just like a decade ago that, like, Netflix would be incorporated into... They, they, had a, they had Human Centipede on Netflix, like, a decade ago. Who would have thought we'd be at this point where they have Oscar-worthy movies on a, daily, on a regular basis? Yeah, and, that, and that's what I'm... Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm trying to get at. It's, it's so... I mean, it's it's such a bold and fearless movie, and like its characters are just amazing. Like Idris Elba, I didn't know how I was gonna. The take... accent was interesting. I was gonna ask you about Idris that. Elba, and it's like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> it's like it's like it's like like a cowboy, but not a fully a cowboy. Like you can kind of feel the the Brit popping out a little bit. I I actually would have been okay with a British cowboy. <laughs> it would have been interesting. Because I didn't know how, I was like, okay, like, you know, we all know how Idris Elba talks. We've heard his American accent. Um, if you've seen, uh, there was a movie, like, way back that he did with Beyonce called Obsessed. Do you know, have you seen that movie? I never saw it. It was crazy. It was just, it, oh, man. It, it was pretty much just more of, like, a, a love triangle drama thing where he was married to Beyonce and there was this other girl who was picking up on the wrong signals and she does a little, some, some crazy stuff with the family. And yeah, I think that was actually like probably my first introduction to Idris Elba like ever, but with his accent in that movie, it was just a, you know, a standard like American accent, you know, with, but with this, with the heart of they fall, I didn't know how he was going to talk because he didn't say anything for a while. And especially as students, you uh, see him when Regina King does, you know, when the whole scene happens. And we'll get into the train sp- scene is so good. Yeah, the train scene was amazing. And also, did you notice on the train what it said on the side? No. Um, it had Chadwick Boseman's. Um, oh, yeah, I did see that on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, I thought I, I didn't even catch that the first time until someone mentioned it to me. I, had to I wonder if he was, I wonder if there was a point where he was going to be in this. I see, and that that's what I was wondering. Like, Honest, in you know, as heartbreaking as it is, the only thing that would have made this movie more perfect if Chadwick Boseman was in it, like he would have. Yeah. <laughs> but like, the question is, what character would he have played? Because I, 
Because Jonathan um, Majors did a great job. I mean, everyone in this movie did fantastic. He could have been, been Bill Pickett. Bill Pickett, yeah, I think so, for sure. Like, it, it's just... Oh, I was going to say he could have been the young guy, but he's not... He wasn't too young. Yeah, I mean, maybe he would have been a villain. I would have loved to see Chadwick as, like, a villain in something. Yeah. But we do see Regina King as a villain in this movie. Yeah, she's amazing. She was, like... She was on it, dude. I was like, that was a really interesting voice uh, dialect as well. It was kind of like a southern draw a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a slower type molasses, like thick type accent. She was like, I can't even replicate it because I mean, obviously I don't have like her, her vocal range, but she was very uh, articulate. <laughs> like I was actually afraid for my life. Like completely. That, that fight scene in the barn. That was oh. insane. All right, so we 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 definitely yeah, we'll get we'll, we'll get into spoilers now. No, oh, yeah, so yeah, because we're we're definitely heading there. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen the heart of they fall, it's it is literally streaming on Netflix right now. That is your first spoiler warning again. That is your second spoiler warning for the heart of they fall. So, just pause the podcast, go watch it, or you know what, watch it while you're listening. <laughs> Yeah, we, we can literally explain everything beat by beat. <laughs> we will wait two hours and nineteen minutes, and then continue talking when you're done. <laughs> we just had <laughs> scene one, act one, black screen. <laughs> just yeah, literally we'll do, we'll do just a commentary track for it. Yeah, comments. <laughs> Honestly, that would be fun. I've always wondered. Like, I've seen a few podcasts out there that do like commentary, like while watching a movie. But like, there's so many different. There's too many like long pauses. And yeah. I was like, maybe we could do that. Or like if we did like an abridged version, like we would have to like edit it down to like maybe like a 30 minute thing and kind of just skip from like one thing to another. That would be pretty interesting. But today we're here to talk about the heart of the fall. And of course, we're now into our spoiler territory. But yeah, let's continue with that. That train, not the train sequence, the barn sequence, just, just everything. So I guess just off the bat, we'll just talk about it. Idris Elba and Jonathan Majors are brothers. brothers. Did, did, did you see, see that, that coming? coming? You didn't see it coming? The age difference th threw me off. It really Idris did. Was, let, me, let me see the age difference here. Yeah. I know Jonathan's in his 20s, I believe. Is he? Yeah, I think so. He was born in 89. Oh, so yeah. he is he's like like what 32 30 yeah 32 something like that how old is he just eldest because I, I i'm not sure how old he is why is idris not in the top cast <laughs> are you in imdb or rotten tomatoes imdb i mean i've been swaying back and forth between imdb and rotten tomatoes but skate stagecoach mary zazie beats she is phenomenal in this film. My God. Idris is 49. So okay. So, seven, yeah, I thought it was 17, 18 year difference. But you see, sometimes parents do like, and I actually saw. But, but, like, that, but that actually that actually lines up, though, because we, they never show Idris's face in, in that first scene, but he would have had to have been at least like 17 or 18 for him to be at that point in life. I like how they did that because it really makes you think, well, we knew Idris is in this movie going in, but. I assumed, oh, Rotten Tomatoes, maintenance in progress. I just got kicked out of the website. So it looks like they're doing maintenance on their site right now. Um, but yeah, I, I like how you brought that up with the first person view. You know, it's Call of Duty style. You got the double barrel shotguns, Modern Warfare there, 2. There's some insane shots, like the, the first person pistol whips. Yeah. I don't know how they did that. But that was insanely cool. I, I wish we knew, man. I really, really wish we knew because... Woo, it's been crazy. Like, from, like when you were saying, you know, like from each just would have been about like 17, maybe 18 years old going into the house and killing Jonathan, you know, the, the father and, and uh, Jonathan Major's mother. Um, I like how they did from the first person view, because number one, they didn't really have to worry about the whole, you know, de-aging thing, which probably would have looked a little weird, especially yeah. trying to make a 49 year old man look like a 17 year old. That's just. I mean, Disney doesn't even have that much money, <laughs> but I really like how it was first person. Cause after, you know, the farther you get into the movie, obviously, you know, it's him, but like from the first person view, it could have been anybody. 
So it's like, oh, it's kind of like a camera trick to kind of just allude to me, like, hey, you know, this is what happened back then. You know, you get a little boy to play Jonathan Majors. Boom, boom, boom. Whatever, whatever. I guess you could have had like a same cheer play Aegis Elba, but this was, I like this shot. Like, he was like, oh my God. He just pulled out two pistols, pointed both at his parents, and was like, yeah, like what's going to happen here? And, and then sharp, and then uh, knife to like a cross into his forehead. To yeah, mark him to mark when him. When he comes back after him later in life. Man, Harry, so that, now that's some Harry Potter stuff right there. <laughs> well, the I mean, different situation, but you know who Harry Potter is because he's got the scar. <laughs> and obviously because of his, his last name, but it's very, in a way, you know, like who's the man who gave you that scar? It's like, well, I, I really like how um, um, Jonathan Major's character, uh, Nat, Nat Love, or is that? Yeah, yeah Nat Love. Um, when he found out the truth of, you know, his lineage between Idris's character, kind of just like broke down. I was like, oof. They both do. They both just start tearing up. Yeah. It's, it's very like, I love like the sense of revenge and just, just. And then, and then you get, you get some perspective even on, on Idris's character because you, you find out that that uh, Nat Love's father left him as a child and went on to this different family. So you see that perspective of why he's, he was so angry at them. Yeah. Or at least at him. Yeah. And, and, and make cause you know, when, when his father was around, you know, he was this like, like the worst father of the year, you know, he was a drunk, you know, he's you know, like hit his mother, like very abusive household. And then out of nowhere, you know, he, he leaves and, you know, starts a new life, a new family with this new woman and it just becomes this whole big family matter issue where it's like, oh man, this is some, this is some Skywalker stuff right now. <laughs> it's all about family. It's all about family, <laughs> as uh, Vin Diesel would like to put it as. But yeah, let's. I mean, you know, we we've been talking about uh, Jonathan Majors and uh, um, Aegis for a while, but I want I want to talk about the uh, the White Town. <laughs> In parentheses, White Town. It's a white town. I I honestly I can say that that was probably the funniest joke I've heard like this year of any movie. That was the funniest joke where they go. <laughs> of course, you know, the, the whole thing starts off where you know, Jonathan Major's crew steals money from from Aegis Elba's crew and it kind of starts this whole thing and I mean just oh my gosh, it's and I know I keep going back to this. I keep rambling and I do apologize. It's just so freaking good. I want to watch it again. But going back to the white town scene, that was just very, I mean, I've obviously back in the day, there was a bit, little bit of race tension there. So, you know, they, uh, <laughs> Nat and, um, my gosh, what was the woman's name? And I loved her so much. I do apologize. Trudy Smith. Trudy Smith. Yeah. She was fan. She was like probably one of my favorites. But I think Trudy yeah, was probably talking about the Regina King character. No, not Regina King. That, uh, that's Trudy. No, 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 not her. Um, the one who, the lady who dressed, who liked to dress. Oh, like that, was, a, that was Cuffy. Cuffy, that's right, Cuffy. Yeah, she was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Came in to see. You know, she, she was like. Um, the young guy, Jim, was like, I'm the best shot you'll ever see. And then she's like, no. Then he's like, who is? And he was like, she was like, every time we look in the mirror. <laughs> exactly. It's it's great. I mean, you had Delroy and Lindo playing the sheriff. You know, every scene was like, there's so much tension. And it was just a bunch of, like, these A-list actors giving their A-game. Like, you you saw, like, like we had said, you know, the fight scene between Zazie Beats and Regina King. It was just... It went on for so long, and it was just amazing yeah i mean like a lot of practical effects like i mean honestly it kind of reminded me a little bit of a quentin tarantino film just the way that it was it was shot the just, blood, blood splatter was very tarantino-esque yes yes i mean it kind of reminded me of Django when Django came up in that house towards yeah. the end and just started whoo man that was some thick blood just it was insane 
And that's what it really reminded me for Harder They Fall. Just this all out, just like good old Western, like brawl. Like, I don't think I've seen anything like this. I mean, even in True Grit, like the 2010 version with Haley Seinfeld and uh, Jeff Bridges, like, I thought that was really, really good. But that was more of a, uh, I mean, there were, you know, you had like your little showdowns, you know, it's ha new <laughs> kind of things. But uh, it was, it was more so just, you know, the action, the drama, the comedy, and the uh, the love relationship. It, everything felt so authentic and real. Like as that, that first kiss between Jonathan, uh, Matt Love, and Mary Fields. Ooh, that was steamy. <laughs> I really wish I had a. They, they, they were feeling it. They really were. I was like, okay. I'm like, you know, everyone's working and whatnot, but I'm like, it looks like they're enjoying that a little too much, but. It is what it is. But yeah, it was, that was some very, very steamy stuff. Um, like even just, you know, their relationship together was, you could tell that there was complications there. It wasn't just a standard like, oh, you know, like I left for whatever reason and I want you back. And, you know, now we're together. Like there were complications there. And we kind of got, we kind of got a little bit of an insight into that as well. So I really liked how there was, there was complications within, within the relationship. It wasn't just uh a you know like boy meets girl type just relationship and it wasn't that, that that first interaction when she's just like talking trash to him is so good she was he was like why'd you kiss me and she was like just to show you what it was yeah and then he she punches him this is really what it is that is so clean i'm telling you these these westerners they're very wise with their with their words and their sayings you, you, you don't see that nowadays like you, you never you would never see someone be like hey what's up like oh what was that for like, oh, like, you know, we're getting back together. She was like, nah. <laughs> Just want to remind you of what it was. And <laughs> this is what it is. So it was it was really great stuff. But wanted to kind of pass it over to you, Devin. I do apologize. I've been rambling here for at least like 20 minutes. But was there any um um points that you wanted to bring up that we haven't gotten to yet? I guess we can talk about Cherokee Bill, the Keith's character. He was kind of just like uh like a he was kind of like the main, like the main bad guy besides Idris Elba. Because he was just so cutthroat. <laughs> he was. I mean, we've we've seen Lakeith in like a not a villainous, but more of a anti-hero esque role before. With with um, kind of with uncut gems in a in a way, kind of sorta. But he really reminded kinda. me of Dan, uh, Daniel Kaluuya and. Widows, the yeah, way he just, played his character does now. not care. Very ruthless, and I yeah. mean, <laughs> like you know, him being the best shot in town, and the other um from uh, Nat Love's gang. Um, I do apologize. I am blanking on his name because Rotten Tomatoes is down, so I can't really look. Jim at him. Beckworth. Jim Beckworth. You know, he's doing all the fancy tricks, and Deborah Orlando's character is like, you know, like you were a good shot to get you killed. Yeah, and <laughs> he got killed. He got killed for sure. But yeah, like he'd I, I love I love the recurring theme of just um well, take a deep breath. Is that what they kept saying to yeah. each other? Mm. And then that's when the craziness goes down. It's I it the highs and lows, like I, I felt like it was paced very well. I mean, for an hour two hours and seventeen minutes, it's not bad. I mean, it definitely could have went on longer, but um, this this film does definitely leave uh, for an opening. <laughs> that ending, <laughs> Whew, she man. is not dead. Trudy, yeah. that that uh, that barn fight. I was like, well, we never saw a body, just like we never saw a body with Icarus, because he's coming back, and you know he's <clears> coming <throat> back. He's coming back. He's he's coming back. Eternal style. He's gonna he be flew like, too close to the sun. He's gonna be like, oh, I'm here. Well, I mean, with that, I mean, that was uh, Sprite. That was Sprite, like making up. She made up that story. And then everyone's yeah. like, she also invented Peter Pan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. That is very true. But I'm just saying, I think we can get a sequel for sure. She was, whoo, man, Regina King's just so she, good. she can get, she can get a new crew. We can get some new amazing actors in there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like Viola Davis, get her in there. Ooh, that would be fantastic. Honestly, get Viola Davis, get uh, Daniel Kaluuya. You know what? I, yes. I want to, I want to see some, um, I want to see some, oh my gosh. Uh, 
Oh my like, ah, uh, what was his name? Star Wars, uh, black guy, Jonathan, uh, John, ah, Boyega. John Boyega. I'm so sorry. Yes, John Boyega in there. Off a cowboy. Yeah, I mean, well, well depends on it. Well, see if you can actually do that that accent, but yeah, like Aviola Davis would be so good in this. Like, she can definitely join Regina King. Regina King exactly. Story. Like 100%. Get Dan Kalua for sure. Um, I'm trying to think who else a younger like actor would be all right. You know what? Um, Okoye from um, from Black Panther. I was going to say her or, um, my gosh, the guy, the, uh, the guy from Waves, the kid. Uh, he's also in Loose. You know what I'm talking about? I never saw those, but I know who you're talking about. Like Waves, well, the first Harrison part of Waves. Yeah, the first part of Waves was good. Yeah, Kelvin Harris, uh, Kevin Harris, Kelvin Harrison, I believe. Uh, actually, I'm, now see, now I'm blanking on. Now I want to see what is. Yeah, it's Kelvin Harrison Jr. That's what. Yeah, Kelvin Harrison Jr. He would be amazing, and in, in, in whatever role it, it would be. But I can definitely see them going with a sequel to this. But of course, you know, take your time. We 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 need the same crew back together again yes so. we need jonathan and zazi ready Oof. to go that 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 wasn't that was some steamy relationship stuff going on i was like man oh man it, it's uh what, what if they throw samuel in there too not not in his django role but yeah no <laughs> we don't want that samuel L. oh my god he he was great in that role though man oh man oh man he was uh, I, I won't say it, but yeah, he, he was he was fantastic. Yeah, he, even him, like, he definitely made you hate him. Oh, absolutely. He was the like tattletale of like the entire just everything that they were talking about. I just, whew, man, oh man, but yeah. Like there, there, there's so much room for this because I mean, there, there could be a part two. I don't know if they can make it into a trilogy. Uh, honestly, just make it into like a double feature or like a duology. I guess that's what that's, people... that's the that's the brilliance of using these characters that were real, but just making up your own stories. They can just go whatever they want with it. Yeah, they don't have to stick to any accuracy, historical accuracy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I like because it's a way to honor and remember that person without worrying about the historical accuracies. Because obviously, you know there there were. A lot of um, um, African American cowboys um, and cowgirls out there, and they can definitely just do their own thing without having to worry about the accuracies of like their life or doing like kind of like a biopic type thing. They can just go on their own adventures, and um, and, I, and I just love how it doesn't take itself too seriously. Like it's not afraid to make a joke. Right, right. I mean, that's the issue with some westerns. Just it's like you're just trying way too hard. Yeah, I mean, even just the. Um, the um the script alone like it was just it was so natural i mean the the way that you know these conversations were flowing back and forth the jokes every, i mean the when i saw it it was in theaters um for early screening from netflix got the nice little uh theatrical netflix introduction i'm like and what it was crazy but, um, yeah like what was crazy was you know, i'm sitting there there was only about maybe four or five of us there but Cause it was like on a Wednesday afternoon. Like, I mean, who's going to be there, but I mean, it, it was, you know, invite of uh, like critics invite only, but um, regardless, it, I mean, it was a smaller turnout, but just because of probably the, the timing um, and, and the day, but um, it was like just sitting there watching the open, the, the full opening theatrical Netflix, like release, or, like their intro. Like it's, it's just, I, I felt like if they played this AMC theaters, they can definitely do it. Do like, I don't know, like maybe a week or like a two week run at specific theaters, the ones that you want to push for um, Oscar or award season, you know, for people to just come and see and then put it on Netflix for everyone else. Cause I feel like people would come see it. It felt so natural. Like Netflix is definitely, I mean, they've been in the streaming business for a while, but they're definitely a little bit leagues ahead more so than others. I mean, Disney's always been there, you know, they they have Disney Plus now, but Netflix is really just, I mean, they, they constantly put out a lot of content and sometimes that like there's so much like good content out there that other 
things do get buried and lost in the mix. Like there's that arcane show that I really want to check out that people have been talking about. Um, even with Bridgerton, um, lock and key, which is something I really like, but I'm not entirely sure if other people are going to like it. It's more of like a young adult fantasy novel, uh, based on a novel, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, it has, um, uh, Amelia Jones who played, um, Ruby and Coda. She's in it. But like, I mean, for, for movies like The Heart of They Fall, like, I mean, do you see there being any type of, um, like, award whispers for this, for this, um, for this movie? Like, do you, do you think anyone could potentially be nominated, like, for whether it be best actor or actress or supporting? I definitely hope so. I mean, based on what you said on Rotten Tomatoes, everyone seems to be thinking highly of it. IMDb has definitely lower scores for some reason, but they always do. Have you noticed that? Yeah, like, like meta scores at sixty-eight. Hmm, that's weird. I don't know. It's I've always I've always noticed that with IMDb, it's like you find a show or like a movie that's like that you know a lot of people are talking about, and it's like I mean it'll show like seven out of ten. Now, granted, seven out of ten is not bad, like by any stretch of the imagination, but like you rarely see anything like eight, nine out of ten. But honestly, seven out of ten is not bad either. But I feel like a lot of people have been conditioned uh, that way when it comes to uh, certain mediums, but we won't get into that. But Devin, are you ready to give your scores for The Heart of They Fall? Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm actually going to go first here and let me uh, pull up the old uh, litter box to, uh, I believe I gave it a four out of five on letterbox, something of that nature. Um, I'm trying to actually think if there were any issues I had with the film besides the runtime. Cause I did feel it a little bit, but I, I and pretty much, it kind of pulled through for me to be completely honest. I didn't really have any major issues with it, which is very, it's sitting currently number 11 on my 2021 films ranking. I did give it a four out of five on the letterbox. So it's like a, I say it's like a ninety, and yeah, I mean it's it's really freaking good. I, whew, man, oh man. But what about you? Yeah, um, it definitely. I definitely built the runtime, um, at certain points throughout, and then there were a few characters that kind of got lost in the shuffle. It, feel, it feels like, mm-hmm. but other than that, I really enjoyed it. And the more we talked about it, the more, the more I've, I've looked back on it fondly. And I'm I'm just gonna go with like a solid eighty five. Yeah. So, okay. So, Devin, <laughs> you've heard of IMDb. Have you ever heard of TMDB? I have not. Well, it's all because I'm I'm shifting through Letterbox on on the information page of the Heart of a Fall, and um, it's at the very bottom. It says more at IMDb, and then next to it, TMDB, and TMDB is giving it a sixty five percent user score. I've never heard of this a day in my life. It's a very nice layout, though. Um, has like popularity trend, which is actually kind of interesting. What is it? TV movie database. Oh shit! I don't know. Maybe <laughs> that's a good one, though. Man, that's very yeah. I mean, it's it's there. I'd never heard of TMDB. It's called uh, the movie DB dot org. So the T is the. That's pretty dumb. <laughs> I like I like yours better. TV and movie database. You know what? We should turn that into something. Because movie- IMDb is Internet Movie Database. Yeah, I I I think we can give MovieRankings.net like a run for its money. <laughs> I, I've used it a couple of times, but it definitely seems like it it gets the job done. Yeah, yeah, I've I've used it a few times as well. I've been actually slacking on listening to a few of their podcasts. Honestly, podcasts all together because I've just been so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's weird how Letterbox has this instead of Rotten Tomatoes, but um I guess that's just their own thing. They have like overview media fandom share <laughs> the movie database. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that's drop not- the uh, come on. MDB. There we go. Movie database. That's a nice name for a podcast. <laughs> MBD. MBD. No big deal. No big MDB, deal. MDB. MDB. Movie database. 
or TMDB. I, I do like TMDB for movie TV, uh, TV movie database. It's actually not a bad name at all, but <laughs> the movie, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm done making fun of it. It's that's, that's just, that kind of killed my buzz. Not going to lie, but um, so you were sitting around, you said 85. Yep. Okay. So yeah, so it's around the same for me. So really great show. You know, I'm not show, excuse me, movie. Definitely everyone out there should go and watch it. And that pretty much concludes our review of The Heart of They Fall here on the Film Optics Podcast. So, man, oh, man, we, we went through another one. My voice is almost shut, but I'm going to power through really quick. Devin, what is coming up on the podcast? We have so much. So by the time this is out, our Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix review will be dropping on November 11th. I don't know when I'm going to drop this. I Maybe Friday, Thursday, just boom, 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 like one one after another. You know, just, just give everyone just a, a little bit of action all together. Uh, we also have our Cowboy Bebop live action review. I believe we'll be dropping that on the 12th. Um, that is Embargo Day. So I'm going to try to get that done this weekend. It looks like me and Devin are definitely at the same point. So, you know, I wanted to get at least to the first one. Halfway five. there. Yeah, halfway there. And then we have uh, Spencer. I believe, I believe we're going to cover that one, I think, if Devin wants to. I'm not sure. I got to try, try to see it. But yeah, yeah, try, yeah. So th- that, that one's more of a TBD for sure. But other than that, um, what, what else do we have coming up? I mean, just. Uh, Next week, we got Ghostbusters. We do. Trailers are looking good. Have you. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen the original Ghostbusters. It's been a I while. I saw the original one, but not the other one. And then I saw the the last one. Yeah. The best. So we got Ghostbusters and King Richard next week. And then the week after that, we have Encanto and Gucci. So that'd be a lot of fun. And then with all in that mix, we have, oh, also our Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince review will be dropping, uh, soon as well obviously after order of the phoenix probably like a good week after i want to say the 17th the week of the 17th so next week yeah so that'll be a lot of fun but other than that um yeah we we got a lot of stuff coming up and of course we have getting back into the disney plus series stuff you know we have um hawkeye coming out on november 24th starting that and we have the book of booba so that would be a lot of fun. A lot, a lot of fun. So um, I'm going to close out here. Everyone have a safe and wonderful weekend. Um, if you have Veterans Day off, like you. Um, <laughs> do you have Veterans Day off, Devin? No. I don't either. My mom does, but she's not a veteran. But she works for vet- veterans. Always support the troops. It's been our pleasure to sh- serve you, ladies and gen- gentlemen. Ugh. So... And that's a wrap for today, everyone. Thank you all for listening. And if you enjoy the show, leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And follow us on Twitter to stay in the know. That was Devin. My name is Christian. We'll see you guys in the next one. And don't forget to check out my written review of The Harder They Fall on InSessionFilm.com. That will be in the description notes below. Have a good weekend, everyone.